right? B Bitcoin is backed by $20 billion worth of semiconductors and hardware and energy. And then, uh, you know, yo-yo coin number 97 was ginned up in the basement of some dude <laughs> in some place that is located behind a tour node. And you just don't even know who that is. And so if you're a, if you're a uh, mainstream investor, you know, the Charlie Mungers and the Warren Buffetts of the world, they're not going to dig into this. They're just going to read something and they come to a very quick conclusion. And like it or not, people with less knowledge than you have more money than you. And the market is dominated by them. So you want to see more corporate adoption, right? You need the FDIC, the Fed, Treasury, the SEC, CFTC, they all need to move forward. FASB has a big role to play. And the only, the good news here is everything I just named is highly predictable. It will happen. It's just a question of does it happen in six months, 36 months, right? 60 months, right? And you have to decide. Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, has shared his latest perception on Bitcoin. It appears he still thinks highly of the crowned crypto asset. Since MicroStrategy has continuously acquired Bitcoin, Michael Saylor has become among the most vocal advocates of cryptocurrency. In fact, the CEO has declared that he is as positive on Bitcoin as ever. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Bitcoin evangelist Michael Saylor updates about the importance of Bitcoin, how it is a million times better than gold, which he declared to be dead money, and his thoughts on crypto regulation. Saylor also speaks on the Terra Luna collapse and why it is a good thing for the Bitcoin space, along with his perspective on Bitcoin's proof-of-work versus proof-of-stake criticism. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Michael Saylor reveals what makes Bitcoin a more stable and safer option than other cryptocurrencies out there. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Well, uh, the nation was founded by people that um, were looking for freedom and property rights, and that's why they left Europe. At, at one point, at one, my family came from Lucerne, Switzerland. They were Palatines, and I, I think at some point Protestants in Catholic Europe couldn't own a job or own property or have a job, and so they came to America. And then, of course, the opposite is a bunch of Catholics from Northern Europe had to come to America for the opposite reason. So the American dream was always go west, get property, live your life, live happily ever after. And after we all got here to Virginia, if we were Protestant, or to Maryland, if we were Catholic, or to <laughs> Pennsylvania, if we were neither, but Quaker. <laughs> after we got here and it got too crowded, everybody went west again, right? To the Great West, to Wyoming, and they wanted land. And now the world is just full of people, and you can't go west anymore. So, and, and we can't really all go to outer space because space travel is too expensive. So where we can go is we can go to cyberspace. And what if you want, or if what you want is the American dream, you want property rights and freedom and sovereignty, then you can move your life force, your life savings, your economic energy, your property into cyberspace where you might have the hope for freedom and sovereignty and, and truth and, and a decent life. And that's the American dream. Michael Saylor also discussed Bitcoin and MicroStrategy's long-term plans for the digital asset. Saylor reiterated that he would keep buying Bitcoin even if it meant buying at the top. He also explained that he would buy Bitcoin whenever he had some spare cash. Furthermore, according to his analysis, Bitcoin is the most certain thing in a very uncertain world. If you roll the clock back to March of 2020, when everything drew down, Bitcoin was like 4,500 a coin. If you look when I had no interest in Bitcoin before the second quarter of 2020, and in the second quarter of 2020, I was really disturbed by COVID, the K-shaped recovery, the, the impending hyperinflation I could see coming. And I was looking for an inflation hedge, and I and I had $500 million to invest. And I actively decided, I said, should I buy gold? Should I buy the S&P index? Should I buy Amazon or Apple? Amazon, buy, Amazon stock was trading higher then than it is now. The NASDAQ was, you know, ended up trading the same then as it is now. 
uh, gold was trading higher than, than it is now. And we rifled through that and we decided to buy Bitcoin as the digital gold. It's basically all the promise of gold without the defects on a big tech network that's exploding. Uh, to make a long story short, Bitcoin is up since our first acquisition 150%. And if you trace it, you'll find that the S&P is up 17%. The money supply expanded 18%. So the S&P index tracked the money supply linearly. Bitcoin ran much faster in the last 18 months. Gold is down. Gold did not actually monetize. I mean, gold is dead money. And if you, if you love gold, I apologize. But, the, but ultimately, the velocity of gold is a million times slower than Bitcoin. It's not a technology. It's never going to get smarter, faster, stronger because of a computer chip. And, and anything that is not getting smarter, faster, stronger because of computer technology, right, is probably not a good investment in the last 20 years. So... Um, Bitcoin already decoupled from the market. Now, it, now it's chopping with a lot of volatility. But over a two-year, four-year, six-year, eight-year time frame, it's a winner. And if you, if you look at it and your metrics are always four-year smooth moving averages, then I think you're fine. If you try to actually figure out what it's going to do in four weeks, four months, four days, or four hours, you're going to give yourself an apoplectic fit. <laughs> Just not. Not. Michael Saylor provided his latest opinions on and said that MicroStrategy's choice to acquire Bitcoin at this time was influenced by a slew of macroeconomic and business issues that they feel are posing long-term dangers to the corporate treasury program, concerns that need to be addressed immediately. MicroStrategy has continued to amass Bitcoin since then, and its CEO has become among Bitcoin's most outspoken proponents. Well, I mean, the, the first principle is is that uh, Satoshi's uh, invention of Nakamoto consensus gave us a, a fair, equitable, ethical mechanism to create a digital commodity. If I wanted to create a, a block of digital energy, people say, What's, what is Bitcoin backed by? Well, it's actually backed by energy. In fact, an, an encrypted energy or a SHA-256 digitized energy and there's $20 billion worth of Bitcoin miners that are protecting and creating that energy right now. If you, um, if you replace all the semiconductors and all the energy that's, that's creating the Bitcoin and protecting the network with uh, imaginary validators and imaginary nodes, you get imaginary security on imaginary asset. And, and uh, from a legal point of view, that becomes a security, which is a, a problem legally. But from a practical point of view, it's no longer a scarce commodity. It's a plentiful security. You end up with 20,000 copies, and then everybody that creates one breaks off and creates another one, because why wouldn't you just keep creating copies of something which is easy to cut and paste? So uh, the fundamental premise of Bitcoin is I use energy and semiconductors in order to create something, a block of digital energy, which will last forever which is immortal, indestructible, you know, which you can move at the speed of light, right? We're digitizing energy. Um, the reason that the energy usage is not a bad thing is because for the most, first of all, it's, it's really digital energy. You're feeding in a tenth of a percent of the civilization's energy to create something which will last forever, which is indestructible. Just not that much when you think about it, a tenth of one percent of energy to create something which could be the basis of the entire financial system of the world, right? But uh, the second reason that it's not really a problem is the tenth of one percent of the energy is all marginal stranded waste energy that, that you couldn't really use for any other purpose anyway. It's basically wholesale stranded energy, generally paid for at like two cents a kilowatt hour, and if you study energy, you know that, that the, the retail rates for industries and people are 10 to 20 cents a kilowatt hour. The entire network is running on a thimble full of energy at the edge of the grid that nobody else wants. And we're recycling that stranded, wasted energy into digital energy, which will last forever, move at the speed of light, and you can build any number of beautiful, elegant things on top of it, right, with no friction, and, uh, and so 
you know, why wouldn't you want to do that? Given the present bear market, the MicroStrategy CEO declared that he is as optimistic on Bitcoin as ever. His remarks were made during an interview where he stated that Bitcoin is the only thing that is certain in a world when everything is uncertain. Folks need a secure space to stand separate from the interference of a government, an agency, or a company in a market full of turmoil and sound and fury. So, Bitcoin is a fair, open, egalitarian network that makes a simple guarantee to anybody who wants to join. Anything you possess is yours, and no one can take this away from you. Additionally, he said that there is no easy place to hide in these markets right now. The market is in bear market territory across the board, because bonds and currency derivatives do not constitute a safe haven. Stocks must increase their cash flows ahead of inflation. I mean, some people think like uh, Bitcoin benefits from anarchy or lack of regulation. That's not true. In fact, uh, I think Ken Griffin said this last week, the CEO of Citadel, he said, he said uh, the entire industry deserves, deserves clarity. We need to understand what's a security. We need to understand what's a currency. We need to understand what's a commodity. And if uh, the SEC does this or gets together with the CFTC and issues some guidance, Tier one firms like his, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they can all start to get involved. And then what we'd like to see is everybody want to play in the industry. Big investors bring money into the industry. And then the banks, you might have seen David Solomon was on CNBC a couple of days ago. And they asked him, do you custody Bitcoin or crypto? And he said, no, no, we can't. Okay, well, there's a little, can you as a bank custody it? Can you not as a bank custody it? When I talk to the CEOs of publicly traded FDIC insured banks, they go, oh, we can't issue stable coin. Our regulator won't let us. So uh, at the point that there's more clarity, I think the banks will get involved. The investors will get involved. Lots of people will get involved. And of course, the bad actors and uh, malicious scammers will get squeezed out of the industry because not all these things are alike. They are, they are very different. And uh, the general retail population, they don't have a choice between taking a stable coin from a bank or a stable coin from, from uh, an organization that, uh, you know, ETFs disclose their holdings every day, right? And how about every week, every month, every year? Right now, 70% of the stable coin in the market, there's no disclosure even in a year of precisely what's backing it. So the mar and the market wants a trillion dollars worth of this stuff. Everybody wants it. I can't get it. And the banks that could provide it aren't allowed to offer it. And so we're kind of in this kind of deadlock. And if it took the Terra Luna blow up in order to unstick that, I mean, I don't, it's bad for them, but it will ultimately result in, a, in an industry that's more mature and more functional. So what are your thoughts about Michael Saylor's comments regarding buying Bitcoin at the top forever? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.